In life, we are faced with both good and bad situations. If we are not emotionally prepared, dealing with either of these kinds of events can threaten our happiness and well-being. The result of the choices we make can appear to be luck or fate if we maintain a good attitude and handle them in a healthy manner. The place is Teresina, a small city in the northeast of Brazil. Many people don't have financial access to good education, healthy eating habits, reliable transportation, or quality health care. Katya was fortunate to have a family who had these basic necessities, which allowed her to pursue the things that were important to her. Living with ataxia is not easy. The little day-to-day -day things slowly become more difficult. But I think I can still consider myself a lucky person, because I have an excellent family, a good job, and most of all a great true love, which helps me to face each challenge and makes me want much more out of life. Currently, Katia works for INSS, Brazil's federal program for Social Security. She receives and analyzes applications for benefits for maternity leave, retirement, death, and others. Katia is a dedicated person, a grade-A girl, very competent, and despite only six years working in Social Security, she does not have difficulty with the complex procedures. Whenever she has any doubts, she asks for help. I always tell her, sometimes many people with much smaller problems just give up. Katya does not. Katya is a fighter. She has a strong personality. She knows what she wants out of life. She goes for it. She fulfills her dreams. But getting to this point wasn't easy. Katya was faced with many obstacles. She appeared to be a very normal, pretty young girl, but those closest to her began noticing odd movement, balance, and walking. I am 30 years old now. The symptoms of my ataxia started early. I started to notice that there was something different happening to me in my teenage years. When I was about 12 years old, mostly at school, my lack of balance was very noticeable because I had to go up many stairs every day. As time went on, the symptoms progressed. If Katia became fatigued, she had difficulty walking without assistance. Juntando os fatos, nós fizemos uma suposição diagnóstica de uma ataxia. Putting the facts together, we arrived at a diagnosis of ataxia, possibly Friedrich's ataxia, because it involved the cerebral system. And at that time, we could not have genetic tests done. So the solution was to investigate other possible illnesses that could cause ataxia in a 14 to 15 year old girl. Many examinations were done, not very sophisticated examinations compared to today. They were all fine. So some months later, the diagnosis of Friedrich's ataxia was accepted. Katia's parents were devastated by the news, but they didn't want this young girl to share this concern for her future. Katia was told that she had been diagnosed with Friedrich's ataxia, but not that each symptom would gradually worsen and she would one day rely on a wheelchair. In effort to make her life a little easier, the teachers at her school were informed about the gravity of her diagnosis. Katia did not have limitations intellectually. No difficulty understanding the lessons in the classroom. No difficulty with attention, 
Her difficulty was only motor, walking. We did not have elevators at that time, and she would always go down the stairs holding on to another student. I remember, many times, her walking and holding on to the walls. We would feel like approaching to help, but at that moment we knew that she needed to face it. Katia's priority in life was always to pursue a higher education and a good job so that she could live independently. She was willing to study hard, even to exhaustion. By 18, she spoke fluent English and had won a prize to spend 30 days in Florida as a reward for her top grades. When Katia learned about the internet, she soon found all the details regarding Friedrich's ataxia. That day, I learned a lot and realized there were many people in different parts of the world with the same problem. So far, I thought I was the only person like that. In reality, there were many people like myself. So I read about the illness and everything that could happen to me. When my parents came home, I told them that I had learned everything. My mother cried and said that they already knew, but they did not want to tell me because they thought I would suffer. Katia continued to get involved with the global ataxia community, which was only possible because of her ability to speak English. She made many friends all over the world, and she finally wasn't alone. In 2002, a friend introduced her to Glenn by email. After a few months of corresponding, Glenn decided to take a big, once-in-a-lifetime journey to Brazil. Although Katia had just graduated in law, she welcomed the Canadian into her home and her job pursuit would be put on hold for 10 days. After 10 days visiting Katia in Teresina, Glenn returned only with plans to go back and spend more time with her. Then, in 2005, Katia made her first trip to Canada. She spent two months there, getting to know the country that would soon become her home away from home. Foi seu jeito de me olhar, de falar perto, de me abraçar, de me fazer sentir especial. Dar algo que eu nunca tive igual. Você me faz tão bem, me faz feliz também. Você me motiva, me faz acreditar que eu sou tudo. Glenn, you make kiss your bride. Now married, Katia and Glenn still live in two different hemispheres, but continue to spend several months together each year. It's their love for each other and drive to spend their time together that makes the long distance seem like a short bus trip. It is a project of God. Why would she like English having so many other subjects? She liked the English that would suddenly appear in her life. Sometimes we have to wait to do things the right way. And many things are not our choice. But Afe has taught me that we can't wait too long because we never know what tomorrow will be like. And staying active and having positive attitude are choices. <laughs> <laughs>